speaking the blessings of His Holiness Swamiji for all our endeavors and for the success of this program, I, Dr. Kushalapa, Director of Academics at JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, extend a warm welcome to all of you and uh, wish you uh, another very good uh, morning. Uh, Dr. B. Suresh, our Pro-Chancellor, has been a mentor, leader and visionary. I warmly welcome you, sir. Due to unavoidable circumstances, sir, is not able to join us today. However, we will be covering his message in this program. Dr. Surinder Singh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, a leader and inspiration. Sir, I extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Thank you, sir. Dr. Manjunata B, our registrar and our constant support. Sir, I extend a warm welcome to you for this Thank program. You, Thank you, sir. I welcome the deans, principals, heads of university departments, and uh, faculty across JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research and the constant colleges and students and support staff who have joined us. I warmly welcome the administrative officers of all the colleges and the IT section, especially Dr. Ravindra, uh, Chief Information Officer, and all the officers of uh, JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research uh, who have joined this program. A warm welcome to all of you, sir. And uh, I will just give you a brief introduction as to what this program is about and uh, maybe just run through a, a few uh, slides just to uh, orient you to what the program is. However, there'll be a lot of uh, information given to you by all my uh, colleagues and including the vice chancellor. Uh, well, the pandemic uh, has taught us many things in being self-reliant. And the uh, online mode of teaching is one of them, where JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research's constant colleges immediately adapted to the new mode of teaching wherein the students did not lose anything by way of imbibing knowledge. And uh, congratulations to all the colleges for and the uh, university departments for having done this uh, uh, job wonderfully well. However, long before this, in fact, on the 9th of July, 2017, to be exact, Swayam was launched by the Honorable President of India, His Excellency, Sri Pranab Mukherjee. Uh, Swayam, an acronym for study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds, has been developed by the Ministry of Human Resources uh, Development, MHRD, and uh, the All India Council for Technical Education, AICTE. Uh, and Swayam, was developed as an offshoot of the massive online open open online courses MOOCs. Uh, Swayam envisages providing lifelong learning beyond boundaries and is open to professions of all domains. In short, anyone, anytime, anywhere learning. This is the objective of uh, Swayam, and uh, we will have an uh, insight into any of the uh, uh, what what uh, Swayam is all about, what the university is uh, will. Uh, or the universities of 2030 will be all this you will know in this uh, thing. And I, uh, uh, CIS, sir, can I have a slide sharing? I'll just run through the slides. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I have the next slide, sir? Yes, I've already told you about this. Can we go to the next slide, sir? Uh, these are the major objectives of uh, the uh, uh, Swayam, whether from the secondary school till post graduation. Uh, ninth standard to be exact, uh, we have uh, all the uh, teaching and conduct of examination, award of certificates to participants having su successfully completed the course and uh, provide recommendations to institutions regarding the implementations of choice-based credit system. Next slide, sir. And uh, this is the uh, vision of uh, Swayam to host more than uh, uh, 10,000 online courses. It has increased more and also the improve the gross enrollment ratio from the present 20 and the 30% by 2020, the pandemic has hit a little, but uh, we are close to that, sir. Next slide, sir. And uh, this is the what I want you to uh, see, the four quadrant approach uh, from uh, the uh, of uh, Swayam, where we have video lectures like e tutorials containing video and audio contents in an organized form, animation, simulations, and virtual labs, e-contents like PDF, e-books, uh, illustration of uh, the uh, video demonstrations, documents, and interactive simulations wherever required, web resources containing related links, open content on internet, case studies, anecdotal information, historical development of the subject, 
and articles, self-assessment containing MCQs, problem quizzes, assignments and solutions, discussion forum topics and setting up the frequently asked uh, questions and uh, so on and so forth. Next uh, slide, sir. CISO, can I have, uh, yeah. And this, uh, uh, I've already told you, uh, it's, uh, 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 and uh, I just wanted to add that peer group interaction is also uh, there to clarify a discussion forum to clarify doubts and it provides around average 2000 courses and 8000 hours of uh, learning. So next slide, sir. And uh, these are the national, uh, uh, all the, uh, uh, this, uh, the, the national bodies which are uh, there and the different roles is there in the next slide. So these are the coordinators of SWAYAM. AICT, the NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning, the University Grants Commission, the Consortium for Educational Communication, the National Council of Educational Research and Training, the National Institute of Open Schooling, Indira Gandhi National Open University, Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, and the National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research. Next slide, sir. Their uh, different roles are uh, uh, shown here. AICT has self-paced and international courses. NPTEL is for engineering. UGC is for non-technical post-graduation education. CEC is undergrad uh, education. NCRT and NIO is for the school education. IGNO is the uh, for the school students. IMB is for the management studies. And the NITTR uh, is for the teachers training program. Next slide, sir. Some challenges uh, which have made most of them have been overcome to assess the progress of the learner or students that also they're working on it and it's almost uh, overcome. MOOCs that demand digital literacy and to train the instructor will be a challenge. That also most of the instructors, we have seen uh, ourselves how good, uh, uh, how our instructors learn immediately. So I don't think that will be a big problem. Uh, at, at the all India level may, may pose a challenge, but yes, certification will be the other challenge. Even that we have learned that uh, the uh, controllers uh, section uh, has, uh, uh, it's not a big problem. We have, we have shown to people that it's not a big problem. And then the economic uh, conditions of the rural areas, uh, uh, well, that again, uh, the uh, common, common areas over there. Hello. And uh, also the signal. Signal uh, issue is also one of the challenges, which uh, we have not mentioned here, but that is also one of the challenges. And uh, anyway, I'm sure the government is willing to uh, work and overcome this. Next. Now, uh, I'd like uh, Dr. Nilani, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity provided, uh, VC, sir. And uh, I'd like uh, Dr. Nilani to uh, please elaborate further on uh, the SWAYAM. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a privilege uh, to discuss here today on the SWAYAM and especially the advantages of the SWAYAM. And the SWAYAM is absolutely going to be a free cost learning, uh, except for the certain certificates uh, we might have to pay. And it's an alternate to traditional higher education course. We are already now, because of the pandemic and beyond that also, DESAS HR is already with e-learning and e-teaching. And the main aspect of this is multidisciplinary learning and teaching. Next slide, please. So we'll see to what is this one uh, uh, going to do or benefit our students. It's a very convenient learning and uh, it's going, we're going to give a quality education uh, considering beyond the geographical locations. We already have an experience in this. And uh, also uh, the student can access to the educational contents, whatever, because as sir said, the four, four quadrants whichever different modes that they would like to learn and the materials will be available to them. And it is very economical. And we are going to support JSSHER and the colleges and the departments going to support the Digital India Initiative by uh, playing a major role uh, by initiating this way. We already have uh, participated as a learner. Uh, most of us have taken courses in, through SWAYAM, but now we are looking in for launching our course into SWAYAM. So that is the reason we are here today in this meeting. And SWAM helps um, in actually taught by very experts like faculties or uh, not only really within our institution, but from a sister concerns and the other um, uh, institutions, higher education institutions and the universities of higher power. And again and again, it's going to help us with multidisciplinary learning for students. And students in the health um, science uh, education background 
or those who are already registered for health science based and life sciences based education if they would like to know something uh, beyond the life sciences and health sciences and in a technology based education definitely they have an opportunity to go forward for this multidisciplinary learning and um, uh, there are many uh, uh, different uh, uh, like benefits or uh, higher benefits that swayam is already providing to the students uh, or, or across our nation and they can interact with professors of any university and any higher education institution they want to interact with the professors from the iit iim uh, yes and uh, the students will be able to uh, communicate so this is what uh, is a benefit for the students and there are a number of benefits beyond this next slide coming to the teachers the teachers have again a wide array a wide platform the swayam is going to be for them to interact with the students within the institution out of the institution and the peers within the institution and out the out of the institution so and by doing this they can rethink their course how they're going to do when they're going to see their peers and the colleagues in through this platform in a national platform how the experts are handling their subject and the subjects of in their interest they will be able to again bring more expertise into their subject and to improve their uh, uh, way of uh, teaching as well as the learning so it's going to be a lifelong learning for the teachers also through this platform and if swayam encourages uh, the teachers to become tech, uh, savvy we are already into it now and multidisciplinary learners a lifelong learners we going to be and the positive relationship between the students and peers in this online learning and to support and organize the online learning we have overcome the shortcomings and we are also discussing on the shortcomings whatever we have undergone through this for the past two years what we are working on this online uh, e learning and teaching and establish and maintain a routine and procedure for the support of the students and also for monitoring the process by every month uh, the report that uh, which is being arrived or uh, which is being shared with the um, deputy director authorities Uh, and the analysis over that has really given us um, a view of what the uh, students are looking in for and what do they want and uh, again with the iqsc involving in it we are looking into improvise and to monitor uh, the requirement of the students through this research. so swayam is going to be another platform which is going to help us through this next slide please and finally uh, when it comes to the swayam for higher education institutions and for the universities already university grant commission from 2017 it has been asking all the universities and higher education to play a major role uh, in popularizing the swayam and to bring in more learners from the university and uh, uh, so that it can be an extensive learning uh, beyond the uh, place where they are going to study it can be all across, all across the nation and the uh, main important thing is that why we are bringing this uh, once once more into uh, your the requirement of university is that the courses and the teaching learning is already happening through swayam but courses and teaching via swayam is going is an important parameter for accreditation and ranking of jss hcr and all the higher educations uh, not only national ranking in arab it is going to be it is a very important parameter when it comes to international rankings also so that is a major requirement that we have to host our courses in this swayam platform and mainly the success of this imparting of the imparting this education Uh, through swayam and jss uh, uh, major mainly depends upon the quality of the courses that we are going to launch and also the success of the candidates and the learners the, and the outcome of the course that we have launched through the swayam is going to be the major um, way that we are going to uh, 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 see that how this swayam is going to help the jss hr and how jss hr in turn helping the swayam so the authorities and the officers of jss hr is looking forward to support the faculty members and the students for online quality education through swayam and this meeting is one of the step to achieve that goal by 2022 thank you and um, dr dakshayani uh, deputy director professor um, and the deputy director of um, authorities uh, will be now uh, briefing on the regulatory aspects and the framework for the teaching learning through online education over to you ma'am thank you thank you dr nilani Good morning to one and all. I will be sharing my screen now. <clears throat> 
Is my screen visible? Visible. Thank you. Greetings from the Center for Distance and Online Education. In this program of adopting and adapting to Swayam, I will be touching upon the regulatory framework for teaching learning through online education. Now we are all aware that all the faculty have got uh, registered to this very important program and uh, initiative of JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research. Before I go into the regulatory component proper, I would just like to highlight and inform all the uh, faculty of the university about what CDOE is uh, doing. CDOE is offering two programs which are approved by UGC. And these two programs are MBA Hospital Administration, PG Diploma in Bioinformatics, where presently there are more than 150 learners who are enrolled into these programs, not only Indians, there are international students in, in these two programs. Along with that, we have Diploma in Pharmacovigilance where there are 52 learners. Now in these UGC approved programs, we are the proud partners of the Ministry of External Affairs EVBAB project. So this is our internationalization. Along with that, five uh, degree programs are in the pipeline with several diploma and certificate programs, which is in the uh, process of development. Now, LMS, many of you all who are involved with these programs know very well that we have a learning management system, which is an in-house built platform for us to offer all these programs, which is JSS AHER Online Education Portal. Now, all these have been possible with the help of all the uh, individuals and the departments in the university, including the IT section, the SICA, the Center for Internal Quality Assurance, Admissions, Academics, all the faculty of the constraint colleges and university departments, along with the examination section and all the departments of the university. Now, along with this, the regulations, what I'm going to be talking about is familiar to all the people who have got involved with this activity of online programs. So I will be reiterating the regulations so that the same regulation is going to be applicable to the programs that we are planning for the Swayam portal. Now, the regulations that I will be touching upon is the UGC Open distance and online education regulation of 2020 and the university grants commission credit transfer regulations of 2021. Now this UGC online courses or programs regulation which was published in 2018 had two regulations separately for the distance education and one for online education which in the year 2020 got combined and now the regulation reads as UGC open distance and online education regulation. This is the regulation that you will be referring to when you are preparing these online programs. Now, when I say program, it means it is a program that is a full program. That is, if we say BSc uh, or MSc, the whole program when we offer them online is a program. Whereas now in the Swayam portal, what we are talking about is a course. Course would be a, either a subject in the program or a course could be just one topic which we are going to be offering online. As we go further, I will describe a little more about these programs, the uh, credit transferable and the non-credit courses rather. So the grant of certificate, diploma, degree through online mode delivered to interactive technology using internet is what this regulation is telling us all about. Now, why did this regulation come into effect? Many of the points Dr. Nilani has touched upon. However, when we offer the programs through online, there is going to be an exponential increase in the number of enrollments, thereby contributing to the GR, GR of the uh, nation. 
along with that we will be getting a global presence both with the learners as well as our collaborators and our reputation both nationally and internationally would increase giving us good amount of visibility and the perception of the university increases many folds as per the regulations, for us to offer any of these programs, there are a few criteria where our NAC score is very important. We being in the A+, we are eligible to offer any of these programs and also eligible for the SWIM platform, giving the uh, courses and offering them through the SWIM portal also. Now, SWIM portal is another LMS, that is a learning management system and our own portal is there. So now what we are talking about today is all about SWIM. And we have to be in the top 100 in the NIRF ranking. So to get or retain ourselves in the top 100, the SWIM process being offered by the university becomes very important. And also the regulation permits us to uh, offer three UG program and 10 PG programs without any approval. So even our certificate programs and us entering into the SWIM portal is also acceptable. As uh, uh, told by the Director of Academics, Dr. Kushalapa and Dr. Uh, Nilani about the four quadrant, the uh, regulation gives a clear uh, description of what these four quadrants are. Quadrant one is about the videos and the other uh, learning material, which is delivered as pre-recorded components. Quadrant two would be the reading materials and the web resources. Quadrant three would be the discussion forum. And quadrant four would be the assessments and other discussions that happen. And all these are uh, again regulated by the regulations of 2016, which is again uh, revised in 2021. Now this is in words I have put here, what it contains. So it is the e-tutorials, the virtual labs, video demonstrations, simulations, all these would get, get contribute, would get uh, in, included into the quadrant one. And as I said, quadrant two will be e-content and quadrant three is discussion forum. And assessment can include not only MCQs, long questions, fill in the blanks and quizzes. It can also have few topics from the discussion forum and uh, the setting up of uh, FAQs and uh, clarifications and general misconceptions. Now, according to the regulation, 3.26 is the minimum uh, score required by the uh, UGC for us to start all these programs. However, as I said, we are in A plus grade with a score of 3.48. Hence, we are eligible completely to offer all these programs. Now, the overview of these programs, again, I've just picturized it so that this four quadrant system has to become very, very clear in everybody's mind. That's why I've just put again, picturized it. Quadrant one is teaching. Quadrant two is extra reading. Quadrant three is engaging the learners in order to see that they get the feel that they are interacting with their uh, peers as well as the faculty and evaluation is fourth quadrant. Now, this is an important slide where we are going to where the regulation specifies for each credit how much of material has to be available and it regulates the content uh, component of the programs that have to be prepared. If it is a two graded program, you can offer it for four weeks. The interactive sessions, which would be in the form of webinars or the interactive live sessions, which as in the university, we have become very, very uh, proficient now, is one hour per week, which comes to, if it is a two credit program, it would amount to six hours. The discussion forum, which is asynchronous, including mentoring, would be about two hours per week. So if it is, as an example, if it is a two credit, it would be for 12 hours. The e-tutorials in, uh, in again in quadrant one should be for 10 hours. And the e-content should be about, again, another 10 hours. And the self-study hours, including assessments. That means to say that a learner, if he is putting in 
about two or three hours to get ready for an assessment in the form of, it could be a case study, or it could be a assignment which you have given to them. If he is putting that many hours is calculated as the study hour. So if, if it is for a two credit uh, uh, program or a course, you should give them about 22 hours of self-study time. So the total, if it is a two credit uh, program for offered for six weeks, then the total would be for 60 hours. So similarly, for four credits, six credits and eight credits, the table is given in the regulation, which you can go through. If it is program, people who have participated in the degree program preparation for these online activities will automatically multiply these things for the number of credits that is present in their particular course or program. Now, all these, if it is a degree program, the UGC very clearly in the regulation specifies that it is to be treated equivalent to the offline programs. Now, for any of these programs, we know that planning is very, very important. Now, if it is uh, for these uh, programs, the regulation specifies that a program project report has to be prepared. Now, this program uh, project report or the PPR, which we call, would make the baseline and gives, an, gives us an idea of how we are going to be going about doing these programs, uh, not only planning, production, as well as delivery of these programs. So the uh, regulation specifies how this uh, PPR has to be prepared. They talk about giving a very clear program objective and outcomes. So when we talk about the program objectives, we have to specify what is it that we are going, why are we uh, giving that particular program or course and what is expected out of this program should be mentioned in the outcomes that have, because, because based on these outcomes, you have to design your evaluations. Now, these are the subdivisions of the PPR, where you will be talking about the program's mission and objectives, relevance of the programs with the HEI's mission and goals, that means, which is relevant to the higher education institute, that is JSS AHER's mission and goals, we will be referring to that and seeing which is the uh, objective there, uh, which we are fulfilling by offering a particular program that we have planned for. Nature of prospective target learner group, uh, target group of learners has to be decided beforehand. That means who are we offering this program to? Its relevance, the, comp the, uh, the competence of the, the appropriateness of the program, what is the competence that is required? What is the instructional design that we want to, uh, uh, what, what, what is it that we are planning has to be mentioned in this PPR. The mapping of the creditors for each of the course also has to be mentioned in this PPR when we are submitting the proposal. Procedure for admission, all these would be the common one that we are going to be following. Cost estimate of the program and what is it, what is the fee structure that we are deciding for the program can also be put here. Quality assurance mechanism, which is going to be elaborated, Dr. Prashant, uh, later on, is also specified in these regulations in detail. This is the PPR format. And planning can have, in, in your own, if once you become a course uh, coordinator, you can decide how you are going to be planning it by having different uh, formats so that it is clear to you of how you can go about delivering and planning these programs. So information about it is possible for you to uh, have guest lectures as experts into these uh, programs. As Dr. Nilani mentioned, we can invite people who are experts in a particular field to deliver these um, um, a few topics can be delivered by them. So that can also be decided and given. So this is just a way of how we are going to be, uh, we could uh, take inputs from all the uh, stakeholders and change it accordingly year on year. This is the approval process as by the UGC. And these are the planning, again, a few uh, examples of how we can go about planning these programs. 
Evaluation component of it, as per the regulation, it says that you should have both uh, continuous formative assessment as well as summative assessment, which should have which should be distributed with maximum of thirty percent for internals and the summative examination having seventy percent marks. Now, this uh, question paper, question bags, all those things have to be developed by the institution is what the regulation specifies about. The examination component of it, since these are all online programs, even in SWIM, it asks us who is your or how are you going to be delivering the uh, examination, whether it is online or whether it is in person, but an online based, that means a proctored examination. So at present, the university has completely at home examination system with a servicing partner. Along with that, the examination section also has the other modes of examinations, which are uh, very well, which can very well be utilized for the programs that you are going to be uh, planning now. Now, according to, as I said earlier, in uh, what is MOOCs? MOOC is Massive Open Online Courses, which many are familiar with. And it is in this regulation that the four quadrant approach has been described very well. And the guidelines that is given by UGC for developing the online programs talks about the credit courses and the non-credit courses. The credit courses would be the ones in which the you are going to be seeing which is the relevant course that you can go offer online and transfer that credit to the student. Whereas the non-credit course can be also given where CBCS is not there. So those would be called as non-credit courses. Also the non-credit courses can be even for the faculty and the uh, non-teaching faculty. So as uh, these are a few things that has been told in the uh, guidelines of SWIM of UGC, where they describe what is the SWIM, then course coordinator, subject matter experts, national coordinators as uh, already highlighted. These are the coordinators who are going to be approving the programs for SWIM. Host institution, host institution would be the one where the development of the program occurs, parents institution where the student is registered, subject matter expert, I told it is the expert academician in a particular subject. Then the, the SWIM also has an academic board and the SWIM board, which is there for the implementation and approval of the contents of these programs. Score for the SWIM, you all already have been told about it, where for us, what it would, where we are going to be very helpful for us would be in the choice based credit system, the curricular courses for lifelong learning, as well as independent courses, which is a part of curriculum. The approval pro process would be identification of the course, preparation of PPR, approval by the host institution, approval by the institutions BOS, AC, that is Academic Council, and the BOM quality check and submission of expression of interest through the local chapter, approval process by the national coordinator, completion of production of the course, approval of the quality and submission to SWIM, and delivering and managing the online course. These are in the um, in explanation component, which I have picturized and given to you in the previous slide. The presentation technique, how you're going to be doing it is all given in the uh, guidelines of SWIM. Then this is a, and it is required that we give a transcript of the videos where SWIM has the uh, scope of translating it and giving it with other languages also. The review process of how it happens at the SWIM is also given in the guidelines. And once it is approved, it notifies the university that these programs have been approved and it can be offered in this many number of cycles. And once the students get enrolled, we will be able to uh, deliver the program. Assessment and certification also, that means how we are going to be conducting these programs is described in the guidelines and we can uh, mention that when we are uh, giving our proposal. These are the national coordinators. 
This is a format for the proposal that has to be sent to Swayam. This is the portal in which the Swayam courses are offered once it is approved. And local chapter would be one where it is going to assist us in offering these programs and helping the learners also in uh, taking these programs across uh, uh, India. And we are already a local chapter for Swayam in PTL. And all the specifications of what this uh, local chapter is going to be doing for us is that including the exploring the avenues for adapting the courses will be done by the local chapter. Another, uh, another portal which is going to help us to know how these courses have to be made is UGC MOOCs, where you have the archives, where you can go through and see how these programs have to be delivered in order to uh, get approved uh, for uh, offering these programs in the SWIM portal. Thank you for your patience listening. I would now request Dr. Prashant S, Deputy Director, Academics, to talk to us about the next gen academics, the tools for effective online teaching learning mode. Over to you, Dr. Prashant. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, leadership of uh, JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. They have taken the initiative to take us to the next step of uh, the revolution in education. Uh, second, I would like to thank all the faculty uh, that we have seen the registrations now. Uh, still, the registrations are increasing. Now we are at 407 uh, uh, faculty who have registered and actively uh, connecting to us through this platform. And uh, thank you all for taking out time uh, to think about next gen academics. I welcome you all to this presentation. Adopting and adapting the why I'm very I'll be talking about next gen academics and we're discussing about the tools. Basically, the objective of this presentation will be at the end of this presentation, you will know what exactly you have to do to have your firm footing in Swayam portal. Now, just to recap, Swayam is a portal, MOOC portal, that is massive open online portal from Ministry of Education. Previously, it was founded by a Ministry of Human Resource Development, MHRD, and now which is called as the Ministry of Education. And this is very important for us. Why? That we are going to discuss. And if it is important for us, how actually are we going to implement and put our efforts into getting our university as well as our curriculum vitae more heavier when it comes to the contributions to the Ministry of uh, Education and Government of India portal participation. So as we know, there are nine coordinators from uh, the across the statutory bodies who are participating in Swayam. With that said, we will ask ourselves the question, who should create a course? Now we have 406 part, uh, faculty over us uh, in this uh, uh, online platform. And who among you should be the ones to create a course? And why should you create a course? Where will it be hosted? And ma'am told about JSSU online platform. We have been doing a lot of work on JSSU online and we also have the Center for Distance and Online Education. So what are we going to do with JSSU online? And what are we going to do with Swayam? Is there anything which is going to be conflicting? Let us see what's the resolution is. And how should I create a course? And what should I after I have created a course? So basically at the end of this presentation, you will know why you are chosen to participate and contribute to the Government of India initiative. Let us go ahead with who should create the course. So this uh, question has got two ramifications. One is who from JSSHER should create a course. And now we just saw in the previous slide that there are nine coordinators and which coordinators should we contact for creating the course. Let's go step by step. And before we go into understanding who should create the course, let us see what all courses are actually present on this Swayam platform. If we know what it contains, what it houses, what it has, what it offers, then we will know how we can participate actively. So some of the courses, a very quick glimpse I'm going to take you through. Cell Biology, Cellular Organization, Division, Cell Culture Technologies, Bioengineering, Biointerface Engineering. There is a, a, a overlap between uh, the life sciences 
as well as the medical faculty over here. Bioinformatics, biochemistry uh, from IITs to IITs, Kharagpur and Madras, accreditation and outcome-based learning and introduction to artificial intelligence. We can see diversity there. I have put in this slide to show what diversity of uh, topics are already there on Swayam. And when diversity is there, how we can adapt to the diversity and adapt ourselves to contribute effectively. So we can see that there is a, a medical uh, faculty students and faculty who can uh, uh, take the benefit of this. There can be bioinformatics students who can take the benefit and even artificial intelligence. If we have got now, we are going to actually we have an MOU signed with artificial intelligence uh, industries. So if we have to put our hand into research where we share our the gold mine of data from our clinical scenario and come out with valuable publications, not only publications, but uh, tangible technologies which can help affect and impact our uh, uh, practice, then we need to have at least the introduction of the artificial intelligence. So this shows how interdisciplinary topics what are available in Swayam already and diversified are. Biomedical nanotechnology. Many of us are looking into the future technologies where medicine is going to be and medical practice is going to be affected with nanotechnology. Should we know the basics of this? Why not? Biomicrofluidics, functional genomics, a lot of uh, pre and paramedical uh, parts of the medical college can really take the benefits of these uh, uh, courses. Innovation by design and innovation business model and entrepreneurship. Well, every faculty of our uh, university can benefit from this because this is the thrust where the world is going towards. And we are in the midst of a revolution now. Revolution and innovation in the field of education. And if we know how to put it in a structured manner by these courses, definitely yes. Proteomics, drug delivery, computer-aided drug designing. That can be translated to intellectual properties, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship strategies. Pharma field is the benefit of that there. Environmental chemistry, environmental quality monitoring, geoinformatic system, fundamentals of protein chemistry, life sciences heavier there in that. Immunology, genetic engineering, genomics. Let me run faster now. Cancer fundamentals, cell designing, and uh, molecular genetics, science, statistics, additive manufacturing. Our uh, uh, GIS and uh, GNSS will help our geo uh, statistics department, geoinformatics department of FLS. Nutrition and dietetics gets the benefit here. Hospital management will get the benefit over here. Forensics, dentistry as well as medicine. Leadership, even we can undergo quite a lot of courses over here and that offers uh, educational leadership and leadership in higher education institution particularly and how to use digital photography, e-assessment and educational technology for our online education, including the fundamentals of uh, office management as well as human resource management. And this is a flagship program which I want to show to all of you. The ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, the National Institution of uh, National Institute of Epidemiology, Chennai, is uh, coming out for the registered medical practitioners, a particular course wherein your uh, registration is taken into consideration and over that, your course and uh, the uh, summary of the course of what you have done. That means that the credits gets transferred as a faculty development program for each one of you. Also, this where industrial pharmacy, whether you go into education academics, your ICT will help you there. Industrial pharmacy, that means if you're going to the field of industry and international business, if you're taking up entrepreneurship. So be it education or industry approach or entrepreneurship, it is there. And this is one slide which I have shown, to tell not the topics, but the university which has offered over here. Look at this. Maharani's Arts College for Women, University of Mysore. It fills our heart with great pride that our Mysore institutions have contributed actively to this platform already. Maharani's Science College for Women. Department of Studies in Genetics, University of Mysore. This is the University of Mysore page where they have hosted a program on genetics. Then, not only that, the other institutions uh, from... Uh, Studying from Maharani's College, IIT Kharagpur, University of Mysore, IIT Kharagpur. So it's a wide range of universities offering uh, courses over there. And that is why we have nine coordinators. This is also one of, one of the uh, National Institute of Epidemiology certificate courses where ethic review of health research is there. Very wonderful course. I have gone through this course. It's a beautiful course. Now that we know, and this is one of the programs which you can see that will help you how to actually come out with designing learner-centric MOOCs. We have we are in the process of undergoing this now, and it is an AICT approved faculty development program. You can this goes into your PBAs. So now, answering the question, 
who should now create a course well we saw that faculty of medicine can come out with value addition courses here faculty of dentistry can contribute to the value addition courses pharmacy yes there is an arena for pharmacy to participate fls can contribute enormously in fact then management studies can put in their uh, efforts very very strongly because one of the coordinator is iim bangalore and faculty of natural sciences definitely yes not only that biomedical sciences can contribute this actively school of life sciences at ut can come out with the various courses even though they are not in the same campus no issues yoga yes that's the trust area where holistic way of looking into the uh, whole yoga and health can be brought about and of course the center of distance and online education definitely can come out with various chunks from various other faculties so the question answered at this point of time is who should create anybody can create any one of us can create there is arena in swayam for all of us from various faculties at jss academy of higher education and research for creating whether be it credit courses or non credit courses we may be offering uh, uh, our students may be in cbcs pattern or may not be in cbcs pattern that doesn't matter we just need to offer it on swayam and there are many takers if you would have observed in those slides how many people have taken up these courses what were mentioned there and it ranges to thousands is it difficult let us see now what about the national coordinator whom should we approach when coming to that we have got nine coordinators fine good but these nine coordinators are there why are they there they are there because this caters to the large need of the population it caters to starting from higher uh, schooling that is uh, the high school education till phd and post phd post doctor everything is included here included as value addition based programs so when there is a wide range there are various coordinators to restrict themselves to that range so what range should we be aiming at we should be aiming at this particular course coordinators wherein all india council of for technical education aict particularly the pharmacy faculty national program on technology and enhanced learning medical dental and all of us can actually contribute to this particular coordinator through this particular coordinator to swayam university grants commission all all the faculty of jss ahr can contribute through this uh, uh, coordinator consortium for education educational communication this actually is a nodal uh, national coordinator office for every one of the courses so any one of us can go through this uh, uh, national coordinator and then the indian institute of management bangalore especially the health system management studies can go through this coordinator now what do these coordinators do these coordinators actually handhold us handhold us in two ways one they receive our applications and our material and they give us feedback about the quality so it's a quality assurance uh, assurance step that is happening from these coordinators not only that they not only critically appraise of our quality they tell us about the fine tuning of the credit system if we are offering one whether it is self paced or uh, timed self paced means it just opens and it runs for uh, months together and at any point of time multiple entry multiple exit is there for the students the multiple entry multiple exit actually before coming to any pkm to swayam platform even the credit transfer system before coming to national education policy 2020 uh, the credit transfer system was adopted by ugc in the swayam port portal so this is the practical laboratory for practice of credit transfer systems not only that even if we don't have credit transfer system we can give timed courses so now we are very clear every faculty of the jss hr can come out with this and every coordinator need not be approached we can streamline our approach to particular coordinator which is concerned with our domain so with having that answered who should create and who should be the coordinator for creation we will answer the question why should i create this course is it required for me things are running fine for me why should i create this course well the answer to this actually from our heart basically we are transforming india national education policy 2020 has come after 34 years of regulation of education and this covid has posed such a great challenge that today there is actually to say we are in a midst of a educational revolution a soft revolution in the field of education the last revolution which happened in education was in the 18th century when there was industrial revolution where trains and tracks and steam engines started bringing out people closer so universities started getting centralized people started mobilizing and with this mobility came centralization of education now we are exactly doing the opposite of it we are actually decentralizing education when i mean decentralizing education well i have a movie here at the end of this uh, program if we have time we will play that movie that shows that there is no age bar for learning now 
and there is no time bar for learning now there is no geographic boundaries for learning now and the future of buildings recognized as university is a big question mark because universities now are getting connected we are now 400 faculty 406 faculty on this platform thank you not a single drop out that's very good 400 and 406 faculty and all of us are connected to see what we can do in the future of education is this not the future of uh, communication in education definitely yes and when this is the future of education either i adapt to it i adopt to it or i cease to exist and cease to exist is not our option so definitely when we are going for this we are going in a very strong way also now there is a new bank coming up yes the bank for academics now the academic bank of credits is going to be made by the nep 2020 when the national education policy is transforming the nation to bring the teachers and students age bar cancelled distance bar cancelled over the uh, internet connectivity and over the uh, virtual platform all of us are connected and we can learn and the beauty of this is i showed you all the courses for one more reason that is there is no fixed domain for any particular uh, topic or particular faculty or particular profession being a medical personnel i can learn about artificial intelligence and i can connect to the industry to make my practice better being a dentist i can connect to various other statistical uh, software learning uh, courses and i can come out with value addition outputs from my observations of the patients which i have treated being a life science faculty i can learn the problems that a, 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 a clinician is facing and come out with bench side solution which can be treated which can be used on bed side and so it is becoming multidisciplinary that is what nep 2020 has done now it has created a huge platform for everyone to share knowledge to expand knowledge and not just get restricted with the profession so this academic bank of credit is a place where we all meet for what for sharing our credits for flaunting our credits for getting our credits for what work we have done so multidisciplinary is in two ways one is as i told you the buildings for education is not going to be recognized as universities from now on universities will have courses flaunted online and this online presence of universities is going to offer education to everybody fine i did my education then what am i going to tell other people that i sat in front of the laptop for one full year and i am knowledgeable no there should be certificates there should be evaluations there should be assessments and there should be some evaluation criteria which is going to give me credits for what i have done and this doubt of how to prove a competency of a person has got academic bank of credits into existence all the universities in india in the first phase and over the time top 500 universities in the world are going to register themselves for the indian bank of academic credits yes it is recognized by the ministry of education after the registration what happens they offer courses now there is me 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 not selfishness over here it is multiple entry and multiple exit yes so i can be registered and have a physical classes going on at jss academy of education and research as a pediatrician a pediatric dentist mds in pediatric dentist but pediatrician managing a child it requires psychology so i can register myself for a elective course from harvard university department of psychology and after uh, completing my uh, course at harvard university since harvard university is recognized by the academic bank of credits i can request the harvard university to send my credentials in the form of credits to the academic bank and jss academy of higher education research will be accepting it tell me are we not creating a holistic way we are looking at education so when this is the place where the future is heading towards if i don't create an online course will i exist will i be even recognized am i going to restrict myself to going with a book chalk or a ppt in hand with a pen drive complete a class and come back future is definitely not that so i think i have answered why i should create a course because this is a futuristic way of looking things holistic and being a part of that bigger picture then after having uh, answered who that is everyone and why that is me who is going to do this course each one of us going to do this course 
where it will be hosted. Dr. Dakshani Madam has already shown that it is going to be hosted in the Swayam platform. The Swayam platform is a Ministry of Education controlled platform and the center for this is Consortium of our Education Communication, that is CEC, which is an offshoot of UGC. Simple. Okay, fine. We will come back to this later. Is it so that simple? We will see that. Now the uh, intriguing question is, okay, I am a faculty of JSS Academy of Higher Education Research and I need to be very, very loyal to JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. So I will apply courses, I will give courses, offer courses and bring in a lot of uh, benefits to JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. What will I get if I do it in Swayam? All of them are telling that it is going to be massive open. Open means it is free. Anyone, anytime, anywhere. Previously, it was anytime, anywhere learning. Now, anyone learning is there because it is free. Now, giving a free course, am I robbing JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research of the due credit which I can contribute to it? Well, understand this, we have to understand what JSSE Online offers and what Swayam offers. If you would have seen, I took some time in the beginning to show you all the courses in Swayam. Why? Because if you would have intricately observed all I showed, these are all not at all degrees. They are all not diplomas also. Whereas when Madam showed the courses that is offered by CDOE, Center for Distance and Online Education from JSS Academy of Higher Education Research, they are MBA in Hospital Administration, they are PG Diploma in Bioinformatics, they are Diploma in Pharmacovigilance. So degree awarding uh, uh, the benefit is given to JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. It is a program that has been hosted, launched, controlled, monitored, managed and offered by JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. Then what is so I am doing? If you would have seen, not a single program had term diploma or certificate or degree. No, all of them were value additions. Just like what I told you that I have enrolled myself at JSS Academy of Education Research for an MDS program in pediatric dentistry. Now I want to learn about child psychology. I go to Harvard sitting here, learn and come back. JSS Academy of Higher Education Research takes my credit and considers it and laurels from the JSS Academy of Higher Education Research and degree is awarded by JSS Academy of Higher Education Research. So basically, we are giving value added courses only from Swayam and from JSS HER. We are giving degrees, we are giving diplomas, we are giving PG diplomas, we are giving certificates also. These certificates can also be done by other people. And who are your uh, uh, participants or students over here? JSS Academy of Higher Education requires, requires admissions, whereas Swayam requires registrations. And these all registrations need not have to culminate in examinations. These registrations can go into certificate completions and without certificate completions. So they may opt for just learning and they might be very happy with knowledge or they might opt for credit transfer and here is where the local chapter comes into picture. Let us see what is the role of each one of us and how do we actually go about further. Now we know there is no uh, clash between the JSS AHER portal, JSS U online efforts and Swayam efforts. Okay. Now there is a bit of secret which I will share with you. As all of us are in in internal people, I can share this secret with you. The secret is Swayam offers value addition courses. JSS U online offers programs, big programs, degree programs. Now, how do you get the admissions for these big degree programs? Lot of marketing goes into picture. Lot of marketing needs to be done. Lot of uh, strategy, strategy, strategy is there involved in marketing. There is a workflow. If you offer a value addition to that program through Swayam and do an excellent work in Swayam, what was the registration what you saw in the courses what I showed? Thousands. In thousands. Now, can you not really picturize what benefit the Swayam has for us. If you can showcase our strengths in Swayam, definitely JSSHER is going to be populated with admissions. This strategy is not an undermining strategy. It is actually a beneficial strategy both for Swayam as well as for JSSHER. And looking at it in these terms, you are actually pitching yourself up to a higher level with Swayam and doing a better degree offering with your own host university, loyal to both, benefit from both. Then, now, this has given you the platform of now understanding that I should take the first step. Otherwise, this is the major imp important thing here for us to go ahead further. Now, still the faculty have not dropped. Thank you again for that, for retaining yourself. Then, yes, now is the time when we learn how should I actually create a course. Now, here I'm talking about creating a course 
which is going to run for how many days? I should know that first. I should know what is the amount of work that is involved in creating a course. By experience, we can tell that one hour of online education requires four to six hours of working from the faculty. But this four to six hours need not be for every uh, topic and every hour of uh, interactions through online mode. There is a way to smart work. To understand smart work, we have to understand what is hard work. First. So let us let me tell you what is hard work. All this time, don't think that university is just coming out and telling you that you have to do courses. We have to populate JSSHR. No, we have also done our work before coming over here. And let me tell you what work we have done before actually asking you to connect with us. We have registered JSS Academy of Higher Education Research as a local chapter with IIT Madras as a local coordinator. And our networking for fast tracking the approvals has already been from our side. And we had also participated in three digit numbers with students for various MOOCs courses so that our people start understanding what is the system of education. Our teachers also start understanding what is the education system in MOOCs that has happened over past two years in a very silent mode. Now, since the credit transfer has taken good shape with the national policy, this is the place to where we are going to run faster. So we already have the experience. Also, our local chapter was awarded two times as the best active local chapter in the zone of Madras, that is the south zone of the Indian uh, subcontinent. So that is the thing what we have done. Second thing what we have done is, previously you can see the evolution of these uh, programs. You can see that we used to tell you, we used to show you the tools, exactly the uh, technical tools, whether you have to, uh, um, how to edit your PPT, how to create your PPT, how to edit your video, how to create your video, and all these things you had to do. So from beginning till end, there was a requirement from your end. Now it is not the case. We have also evolved. We have a stronger technical team. Thanks to Dr. Ravindra and his team for his support for extending the applications for academic uh, usage. Now we have got a team which will come the way to get you the IT facilities. All you have to do is what you are good at. What are you good at? You are good at your subject. I am good at my subject. So let's do what we are good at. Let us deliver classic lectures. Let us connect to students in a way that they feel JSS Academy of Education is what is what it is. And the rest of the things we have the IT team to go ahead. So if I have to tell about how do I create a course, it is going to be a simple thing. It is just intellectual things. And I'm not going to talk about uh, you know uh, technical things over here, which is not required to be learned. We don't need to learn and unlearn or relearn anything. We just need to do what we are good at, teaching. Yes, identify a course with the domain specificity. There is a requirement that if I am a pedodontist, I cannot offer a course in music. It might be my passion. It might be my uh, hobby, but I cannot offer a course in music unless and until I have a professional degree in music. So you need to have a degree of whatever you are going to preach others. Basically, you have to identify your profession with your domain specificity and your degrees, what you have evolved yourself with. Once it is done, then you have to identify a course. Let me see how to identify a course here. Now, when I open it, let me take an example, which is very easy to do. I open my textbook and I have various chapters listed in the contents page. What usually I do when I select for a course for offering over the Swayam platform is that I see the chapter heads. I see a lot of subheads. Every subheading, which is going to be multidisciplinary. If you think that subheading of that particular chapter can help people of various domains, that is the course that you should be offering. Why? Because the world is your market. Many people are there who will benefit from the concepts that you're going to teach. Understand one thing here that we are giving a certificate course, not a program. If it was a program, the entire contents page of the book would have been done, would have been uh, had to do. We had to do an entire thing. But this is just a value addition part. So for a value addition part, it should be interconnected, multidisciplinary, and dynamic for field where various domain people should get the benefit from it. If you have such a subhead topic, that will be the title of the course. And from that, you have to assess the impact of the course. We cannot just offer a course just because we want to offer. It should be impactful. And at the end of the course, we should be able to meet the objectives of the course very, very effectively. And we have got the set guidelines from SWAM, which is very robust. Actually, the Academic Bank of Credits, as well as the uh, transfer of credits, both are originated, they have originated from the Swayam platform. And it has been refined to now for the entire education system. So this can help us 
to make the assessment of the impact from this. And there is one more secret here. When I do a SWAYAM course, basically, I am getting an external mentorship over here. And the government of India is handholding me also. If I apply as a subject matter expert, I may be a single faculty course, I may be running a single faculty course, or I may be learning, uh, running a multi-faculty course. The example is the ICMR from Chennai, that is National Institute of Epidemiology from Chennai, offers health research fundamentals as a multi-faculty mode. There are eight people in that and all eight of them participate in a very structured way. Whereas the animation course, which is offered by one of IIT Roorkee uh, uh, University, uh, the institution, it is a single faculty mode. So you may opt out for single or opt for multi-faculty mode of approach. Whatever you do, you have got hands to help you and you have got mentorship. Even if you make a mistake, the government of India has recognized mentors to help you out to come out with a good program. And it is a short program. I was telling you about the duration of the program. Let me tell you now what is the duration of the program. That's why I'm offers. It starts from two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14 till 16 weeks. Depending upon the magnitude and impact, the weeks are decided. And depending upon the number of weeks and distribution of the uh, material, the credits are decided. And let me, let me discuss more about the credit uh, later. But coming to this short duration, for one hour, you will take four to six hours of working. Now, you have already done this in a face-to-face -face mode because you are choosing your domain topic and you can take value additions from what, what already you have done. That saves at least 50% of your work. And the duration of the course is very small. So, you can actually get a well-structured uh, grooming, training, hand-holding for you when you do a, SMOOC, a SWAYAM MOOC. So, with this SWAYAM MOOC, you will definitely become a perfect model for taking it into the JSS Academy of Higher Education model next. Because in JSS Academy of Higher Education Research, it is going to be a bigger program. So start small, learn slowly, expand big. This is the opportunity that Swayam MOOCs offers to us. Disadvantages are not there. When we are face-to-face -face teaching, we have got all the material. We convert the material and put it in a structured way. That too with mentorship. Good enough for us. And from there, we become course program coordinators for our JSS Academy of Education Research. And you all know what is the respect that every course uh, program coordinator has in our university. So then let us go to the third step that is applied SWAM coordinating center. So it is through the local chapter. Previously, we did not have local coordinating chapter. So we had to run to the nodal center and get the job done. Now you have one person sitting in the university who can do this connectivity for you from the local chapter. We can connect you to the nodal center and you can get the benefit of staying where you are, doing your best, getting all the benefits and taking the laurels. Then confirmation from the coordinating center is got after the quality check and assurance has been done. And then we actually go ahead and conduct the program on the Swayam MOOCs platform. The uploading is done by them. The management of time is given by you and it is followed by them. And you just have to sit for online uh, discussion forums to connect to your students. Evaluation, 2,000 people are there. How will I evaluate? Everything is automated by government of India. And they have really thought it out very well. And it is in an automated way that you are going to get the uh, marks distribution, including how it is uh, rated. 25% from the assessments is got. 25% from the uh, unproctored exam in some courses is got. And 50% from the proctored exam it is got. And who is going to conduct the proctored exam? Definitely not us. Definitely not you. Definitely not who we are going to um, uh, host the program. It is going to be from the government of India, Ministry of Education. They will identify the nodal centers, identify those centers which have got good technology and uh, proctoring services. And the student is issued card. You just have to accept that uh, and enter student has done or not done. So we just have to see whether the student has performed and based on the performance, the AI takes its steps further and look how easy it is. The Government of India Initiative has given us the privilege to do what we are best at, teaching. So this is how we conduct the program. Finally, this is what uh, the talk is about creating of Swayam courses. and We have got to keep the flags of JSS Academy of Higher Education Research flying high. It's our responsibility. And for this sake, we need to join our hands to create these MOOCs. Further, we are continuing now, but I will be ending my presentation here. If you have any doubts, please feel free to contact me at 9341-816701.
I repeat, 9341816701. Happy to serve you all the time. And now, regarding the quality concerns in the online teaching learning scenario, we have Dr. Prashant Vishwanath, in charge director of research and IQSC coordinator, to address you in the minutes to come. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Prashant, uh, for your presentation and uh, introduction. Uh, let me take over uh, from here and uh, address the faculty on quality in online education design, development, and delivery. Uh, first of all, thanks to the participants for uh, registering for this uh, 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 orientation program on the Swayam uh, MOOCs platform and uh, taking forward the discussion on uh, online education design, development and delivery, I'm going to seek, uh, talk about the quality aspects. Uh, in a recent report by the International Council uh, for Open and Distance uh, Education, uh, they had highlighted a few features about the uh, scenario of uh, online uh, education in Asia. And some concerns which they had raised was that there is a strategic role for open and distance learning in many Asian countries, but there are issues related to the perception of these modalities. Now, why this perception of these modalities is because many of the people or many, uh, many feel that, you know, the education provided on an online mode is not uh, of the standard of an offline mode, or that they have believe that, you know, that th this is a substandard, or they don't consider it to be equal to, a, uh, to the regular uh, programs. But this perception has been changing, and we have seen the success of uh, Swayam, as well as NPTEL programs. And Dr. Prashant uh, also showed that, you know, many of our faculty and students have undergone additional training in these uh, uh, NPTEL and uh, SWIM uh, uh, courses which have been offered. So the other concern was online and distance learning universities have developed quality assurance manuals for the overall implementation and assessment of quality. So by and large, most of the universities which are uh, functioning on a total online and distance learning mode have developed quality assurance manuals for the overall implementation and assessment of quality. And, but still a challenge exists related to the lack of common quality assurance instruments. So we do have open universities and, uh, but there's, there, there was not a common guideline until uh, recently that uh, existed that can be used for online learning. So what are the quality issues? So when, when I'm, I'm talking not just in the terms of, you know, uh, SWAM or, or, or online, but I'm talking about the overall programs and when we are offering our programs to across the world. So what would be the quality issues? So when multiple regions identified the quality frameworks, there is still an issue with consistent standards. So the standards in India might be different, standards in some other country might be different. So we need to look at the global quality standards, not just looking at the SWAM or uh, uh, the, uh, the local uh, guidelines. We have to look at the International Council for Open and Distance Education guidelines also when we are trying to prepare the uh, programs or courses uh, within our own system. And the lack of standards uh, currently, what we uh, do not have, that, that is uh, common standards across the world. So this, with this uh, you know, the, the credibility of the open online flexible and technology enhanced learning is sometimes questionable in some of the countries. And institutions may offer courses or programs that do not incorporate best practices, which can result in poor learning experiences for the students. So it's very important that, you know, when we are talking about starting of uh, courses and offering courses through the uh, MOOCs platform, we need to have certain kind of best practices inculcated into our own system so that we can proudly tell that these are the best practices that we have in developing our own programs or developing our own courses in the online mode. So what are the certain important uh, key aspects which help in uh, bringing out the quality of the courses being offered in the online mode? One is professional development. So this program also what is being organized is a part of the professional development. So first thing what we need to do is orient the faculty towards uh, online courses and uh, so appropriate training should be made available to build the expertise and skills of the faculty for developing uh, the teaching courses in these modalities. And without professional development, faculty cannot be comfortable teaching uh, 
in the online mode though they may be very comfortable and expert in the traditional face to face mode but they may not understand their role in the distance learning environment so we need to train them and make them confident of uh, developing content in the online mode in addition faculty must may not understand how to best support the students in a virtual classroom so uh when once we are shifting from a, a regular classroom to a virtual classroom it is very important for the faculty to know that how best to uh, support students so student support mechanism might be totally different in a virtual uh, platform and societal perception like i did mention in the beginning that many uh, still perceive that you know the online courses do not have the kind of credits that uh, uh for in comparison with the programs which are being offered in the offline mode so we need to develop that perception that online programs are equally good and are equally recognized when it comes to the whether it is a promotion whether it is whether it comes to you know uh, credentials so we need to come out of that perception that uh, the online programs are uh, uh, not, not having the same value we need to recognize them and give them the same importance so while developing good quality programs for the online mode what we need to look into there are certain broad guidelines one could be a course design the second important thing would be faculty development and support the third is the institutional support and fourth would be the learning services how you are going to cater to all these things so also the ministry of education previously known as mhrd had also issued guidelines about uh, how to develop uh, the e content for the massive open online courses so they have developed they have recognized a national coordinator uh, who is going to be the principal uh, who is going to select the pi or subject matter experts so <coughs> there have been guidelines which have been framed by the uh, ministry of human resource the ministry of education and these guidelines need to be adhered to when we are preparing our courses so i am just going to take you through some of the uh, uh, main contents where which are relevant to us uh, for this uh, particular uh, uh, program so a swayam course shall be classified based on number of weeks of engagement and number of hours of video so dr prashant has already given examples of a 12 week program 8 week program or a 4 week program so you can decide what number of weeks you want to engage the learners in the online mode or what would be the required content that should go in the uh, either a 4 week course or a 8 week course and then design uh, the program accordingly so the production process of e content or content development should meet the highest industry standards both in the technical and academic terms and implementing agency should also ensure that technical guidelines are strictly followed and you should use professional equipment with very good quality cameras and editing units and we are very proud to say that you know we have got uh, media centers established across the jcs academy of higher education research and the one in the dental college being the model uh, kind of a uh, media center what we have uh, in our own uh, setup so when we are developing the digital content we need to look at content like the assignments glossary downloadable pdfs uh, uh, the word documents what what is the kind of content that we are trying to provide and uh, uh, how he can uh, download it then the cameras and the recorders used should have certain uh, standards they have uh, defined the standards and definitely based on these standards only the jss academy of higher education research has procured the uh, best possible you know kind of digital infrastructure to support the media center which is there in the dental college then editing process and standards of course we do have a uh, editing uh, process and uh, the C, uh, cio and his team the, uh, the uh, uh, we do have software dr prashant can you know Uh, also guide you through when you are actually developing the content and editing the process so there are certain uh, uh, regulations that how much time the speaker should uh, speak extend over what what time uh, frame should be there for when the teacher is uh, completely occupying the screen or when there is uh, you could see dr prashant's presentation you know wherein he had about 6 to 8% of the headroom and remaining part was the powerpoint presentation what he was using so there are certain guidelines which have been laid down by the uh, ugc and uh, mhrd or uh, ministry of education for the content development and the quality of the uh, content which is being uh, prepared for the massive online open course for the moocs courses so the video multimedia produced 
for the MOOC shall conform to the technical standards. Again, they have laid down the technical standards. You need not worry too much about those standards. But what we I mean to say is that we would be looking into the quality aspects based on those standards and guiding you through that. You know, this are uh, this is how the uh, content recording and content editing has to be done. So, what are the responsibilities of a subject matter? Also, has been laid down in the. Uh, guidelines so you all the faculty we become the subject matter expert for the particular pro program or course that we are trying to offer so there is no program it's only courses that we are trying to offer through the uh, the SYM portal so what what needs to be done by the SME also has been defined how how he should uh, you know kind of develop the program first what are the state uh, stages in uh, which the SME shall uh, kind of develop for the course that is being offered so also not only the responsibilities of the sme there is a responsibility of the multimedia lab and what is the media center's job in uh, the in developing the content for the um, online courses right? and features of a MOOCs compliant e-content what what the features are that you know identify the purpose of the course and the target audience so now when you go back and start thinking about what are the programs or what are the courses that you can start on the online platform in the swam portal you first need to identify the purpose so what is the purpose of the course and who are the target audience so probably if you are thinking about you know in dermatology that you know you might uh, probably want uh, uh, some laser te technique to be demonstrated or uh, kind of a skill enhancement or some kind of a knowledge enhancement first you need to look at a domain that you are trying to uh, provide the course who the purpose of the course and who is that target audience then create a di timelines with detailed tasks to be accomplished uh, our honorable vice chancellor always says that you know you should have a timeline for everything so we have also learned and we are learning that you know how to create a timeline and it always helps to have a timeline that if i am going to develop this course uh, uh, how much time would i require and what are the activities that is going to take place in the time frame and uh, when will this task be accomplished so identify the objectives for offering the course along with the prerequisites and determining the optimum time frame for the course and conceptualizing a course design and release format uh, that is for example releasing all the content at launch or releasing it on a week by week basis so most of the times we follow a week by week basis that is the all the content is not uh, provided to the learner in the beginning itself so the learner has to go through a weekly module and uh, he has to complete the first week task or if he has to undergo the learning through the first week only then the second week content would be enabled for him so you can decide whether you want to uh, launch the content all at once or on a week by week basis then specify broad learning outcomes so now we have been focusing on the outcome based education and most of our programs and courses are outcome based so we need to specify the broad learning outcomes for it then decide the assessment strategy and the level of achievement to be considered acceptable for receiving a course completion certificate so those of you who have done some courses on the uh, nptl platform you would know that you know what is considered acceptable for receiving a course completion certificate so you have to also lay down the guidelines that for the learners should know that uh, what is the assessment strategy and what is the level of achievement to be considered acceptable so the core elements of a MOOCs and these core elements uh, for the core overall course should include that there should be a syllabus template, uh, including a course description with key learning outcomes, descriptions of faculty, a detailed course content outline, expectation for participation, certification and faculty communication, uh, and adequate guidelines and academic integrity. Also, it should be incorporated by pre and post course surveys and course overview to orient students on what is the course all about. So if you look at the NPTEL programs, the, each course, they have mentioned what is it all about, what does the course include, what will I learn in the course, and how do I use the course features. Then also, there should be the course timeline for scheduling the learning activities, uh, list of announcements to deliver the reminders for the due dates, and course transitions. Then instructions on synchronous and asynchronous engagements. Uh, how we are going to engage them, whether it is in the online mode or whether it is in the offline mode. So most of these are pre-recorded. It's going to be asynchronous engagements. Now, elements for the course landing page must include the welcome text and video from the lead faculty, 
and uh, the faculty uh, details, uh, the brief CV and contact details, link to course surveys, guidance on how to get started as a student in the course, and should also have handout section, including syllabus and the learning checklist along with the course timeline. So each course may be divided into week-wise sections, like I did mention that most of the uh, courses are structured week-wise. Then they should also need to plan the introduction, including learning outcomes, direct instruction delivery, uh, primarily through transcribed video content. That what is the uh, content that you are going to deliver through the uh, videos with the learning objectives and faculty provided notes. And Pro, uh, also provide a list of core and supplementary reading list. So there are advanced learners who want to look into uh, the additional course materials and uh, we need to provide certain other uh, course supplementary reading material also. Right? Then auto graded quizzes, most of the programs they use auto graded quizzes wherein uh, they keep on learning. If they do not uh, achieve the desired outcomes, then they again go back and learn and again come back and take the quiz. So that could be planned. Then assessment or, or uh, sorry, section level course uh, structure. You can also uh, think about discussion threads. Discussion threads can be used effectively to engage students. Also, you can think of uh, uh, adding short interactive tools or you can use social media, which can effectively supplement other course material. Along with this, you can think of aligned formative assessment questions. So whether it is a formative assessment or whether it is a summative assessment, there are a lot of assessment tools which can be you know, aligned to the course that you are trying to develop. And we need to explore also such assessment tools so that some new newer technologies into the uh, uh, assessment component. Then finally, the con uh, for the uh, how it should be structured, the conclusion and forthcoming session uh, of the course to include week summary and what to expect next week. So when we are going on a weekly basis, right, at the end of every week, the students should know what is going to come in the next week. And also there should be a provision for the feedback mechanism for the faculty uh, to uh, and respond to the questions uh, from the students. So there has to be a mechanism, inbuilt mechanism, so that anytime the students wants to reach out or has doubts, there should be somebody to uh, uh, address the student learners needs so you can this is just a template what i have shown so for a, a particular course you know, like week one you have designed you know introduction learning outcomes so if if this is the introduction then i need to define what is the introduction for a particular uh, let's say if it is biochemistry or uh, you know small topic in functional genomics uh, then what is the introduction what what am i going to tell in the uh, functional genomics component uh, introduction and uh, it could be you know what is the content that is going to be there uh, whether there is going to be a video uh, but then multimedia e content with uh, graphics, animation, scenarios, case studies? Do I need to provide some textual handout, reading list, core and supplementary? So for the first week I have designed, uh, you know, kind of in a simple table that what is going to be the topic, what is going to be the content, what are going to be the activities and what is the assessment? So if you can design, you know, a simple template like this, that for your particular course, the first week would be this topic, the content would be this, this is the activities, and this is how the assessment is going to take place. So for each week, if you start uh, designing this uh, uh, for the entire course, so if it is a four week, uh, eight week, or a 12 week, so each week, you know what is the topics, you know what is the content, you know what are the activities to be done, and what is the assessment uh, to be done. So this, this kind of a template can help us to uh, deliver or to host the program in a systematic way. Right? And this is just to say that you know all these uh, content are hosted in the uh, NME ICT tool, that is the, the cloud, which is the Badal. Uh, then there are other instructional systems for design of MOOCs, what, what we need to uh, uh, understand about the design and development that needs to be carried out by the following instructional system. The first part is, you know, after you develop the thing, we need, when you start the process, first we need to uh, analyze, uh, then design, then objectives of the course, then instructional strategies. What are the instructional strategies that are going to be adopted? The instructional material, which is going to come in with the pro course, the summary, uh, then evaluation strategies and detailed time-wise course session plan to define week-wise activities. So I've just covered all these things. Then how are you going to implement it? 
and the duration of the course. So again, whether it is a four to 10 weeks course for shorter courses for two to three credits at certificate level, 12 to 16 weeks for CBCS program with faculty mentor support. And uh, a lot of uh, uh, emphasis has been given to the credits. And uh, uh, Prashant also did mention that the uh, credit system came up from the SWAYAM into the national education policy also. And again, the same thing that uh, uh, each week you can uh, structure the course into the week wise. So quality is a concern in the uh, design, development and delivery of the uh, MOOCs courses. And there will be quality checks at different uh, levels. And we do have a checklist at our uh, Center for Internal Assur uh, Quality Assurance. And this uh, checklist would be used to check the quality of the programs being developed and delivered. So there are, uh, you know, mechanisms in place. We have already done it for uh, most of the courses right from the PPR. Uh, once you pro uh, propose the program project report itself, uh, right from that day itself, the quality uh, mechanism comes into uh, play. Right. So, Dakshani Madam has mentioned about the program project report uh, and how it has to be submitted. And uh, finally, I would uh, also say that, yeah, it's all the motivation and uh, understanding. And, uh, the, it is we who have to, you know, kind of initiate uh, the, the process. And once we initiate, we would be able to come out and deliver the program's success, course successfully. Uh, now, I request uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, uh, Dr. Surinder Singh, sir, to kindly uh, uh, take forward the sessions. Dr. Prashant, uh, good afternoon to each one of you. Uh, at the outset, I would like to submit my humble pranams to the lotus feet of His Holiness Swamiji, the Honorable Chancellor. And uh, I also convey my warm greetings and wishes to our uh, to Chancellor Sir, Dr. B. Suresh, who, because of his some uh, pressing commitment, could not join us today. But uh, he has conveyed his uh, best wishes for our today's program success. I also convey my warm greetings and wishes to Dr. B. Manjunatha, our registrar, Dr. P. A. Kushalapa, our director of academics, Dr. Nilani, uh, P. A. Deputy Director BQS, Dr. B. Prashant, uh, in charge, uh, Director of Research and also IQC Coordinator, uh, Dr. M. R. Dakshani, Deputy Director of Authorities, Dr. Prashant as uh, Deputy Director of Academics and all of the faculty members who are online for today's session. Now, this uh, the theme for today's uh, webinar, uh, the Adopting and Adapting to Swim. It's uh, another milestone in our JSS HR's journey towards excellence in all spheres of uh, teaching and learning process which also includes the new way of mode of delivery. Uh, with this uh, webinar, we'll be turning a new chapter uh, in our this endeavor. Now, as uh, Dr. Prashant uh, S. had already mentioned, that uh, we, we it's not that Swayam is something new. It has been there for the last two years in our JSS HR activities. Uh, we had a local chapter. Uh, we had also had uh, IIT Chennai as our coordinator. And uh, this program has been suddenly uh, now coming to the forefront out of the back burner. We have picked up and brought in the forefront. And today we are talking of its importance and then the regulatory framework and the tools and quality. And then why we have started suddenly talking about it. Where was this program for the last two years? So I think most of you faculty must also be hearing that there is something like this in which, you, which is in the like in GSS HR activities. Now, why it has become very pressing for us is because of a couple of reasons which is there. And out of that, the most uh, pressing reason I would say is our national education policy 2020. And other very pressing uh, uh, issue is the competition in the market. Because what happens is these uh, activities are very important from a ranking perspective and accreditation perspective. And uh, with the NEP 2020, and with the COVID bringing online education in the forefront of education delivery system and NAP saying the 20% of our programs should be online. Uh, I think this has become a sort of a 
uh, activity of our GSSHR, which we cannot leave, uh, leave unattended. So that's why we are here today. And this is the reason because the competition in the market is hotting up. What we have seen is university after university going up the ranking. We are there. But if we have to retain our position and go up the ladder, we always have to have new strategies, new ways of working and see where are the gaps in our system which we need to plug and the, the speed with which we plug, I think that's very, very important for us. And that's why we are all on this platform today because you must be wondering why we have dug it out and today we are talking about adapting and adopting this uh, swine port uh, in our activities over there. So it's a matter of urgency for us. Let me share with all of you. And uh, the more important thing, as I said, is as the market is getting crowded with a lot of universities, a lot of uh, activities happening in this from the various institutions, there are three elements which are very important for us if we want to make a niche for ourselves. One is the speed with which we occupy this space. Secondly, is the quality of the content of the programs which we offer. And third, of course, is the volume, the quantity, the number of programs we offer. And we have to be there. And I, in this regard, I, I think personally appeal to all the principals and HODs because ultimately these types of endeavors are leadership driven. So the leadership has to come from all the principals and all the HODs that by the time we apply for these rankings, at least some of our courses are there on our uh, uh, SWAM portal, which we can which we can put on the SWAM portal. If we can do it, I think that will be very good because what happens is we don't want that uh, uh, to mention that we don't have these programs. So this, this I think, uh, is one of the sense of urgency which we uh, have to attend. And in this regard, I, as I, I could see was that at some point we had about 406 people online. Now, what I would be requesting is that all 550 odd faculty who is there in our uh, university, uh, constituent colleges and departments have to be part of this endeavor. They can be like, uh, as uh, Dr. Prashant has said, there can be single faculty courses or there can be multiple faculty courses. But each one of us, just, just like your hand, you got a little finger also and we have got uh, the middle finger also. So each one has to contribute to some degree towards this program. Nobody can be left out. And I had called Dr. Prashant uh, Vishwanath in the morning. I said that in these types of activities, when so much of faculty is coming online, and so much of leadership is coming on the platform. We are investing a lot of time and energy into these types of activities. And as a vice chancellor, I would like to see the impact because every minute we put into these types of activities, we want to see a tangible results coming out of it, activities. We cannot allow our energies, times, and our resources to be withered away. So that's one thing. And I told him that once we have this activity, this activity has to be mapped. What was its impact? How many programs did we get? Which the uh, constant college or the department had the maximum programs? Who were the people who contributed to it? And in this regard, we should map it and we should duly acknowledge it, appreciate it, and also see that it becomes a part of their annual performance also. Because you see, there has to be due recognition to the efforts which is coming from the faculty. And this is uh, what we look forward. And those are the faculty, because I know that uh, we have come at this program. The faculty also had some of the faculty who could not join online. They had a prior commitments. They had a pressing uh, already commitments already at hand. So they had to attend to that. And since this uh, program is recorded and our CIO has seen to it that uh, this recording is available to all the principals and the heads of the uh, departments, so it is shared with all of them. Those of the faculty who have missed this program I would be requesting the CIO and to uh, the principals and the HODs to make it sure that that faculty is provided with this recording. So that at, an, at their time, at their leisure, whenever they get their time, they can at least listen to what transpired today. It just takes them one hour because uh, talking on these platforms, it takes longer, but they will know where the essence is and what to listen to, and they can quickly grasp of it. And they also part become of our endeavors. Now, because what I feel is that as a university, each one of us, each one of us has got a role to play in our university going for higher rankings and scaling greater heights. Because see why it's very important is because today, today students, when they enroll for any university, college or any department, they look at these rankings. And Swayam portal is going to give us a lot of visibility and reach 
because what will happen is students across the length and the breadth of the country they would be seeing these programs so what it does is it also brings visibility to jsshr and also brings a lot of visibility uh, this of uh, besides visibility it also brings a lot of brand value, uh, value to our programs because if we do good content programs are put on it will be basically doing a, some sort of a free branding for us also and we can have large number of students across the length and the breadth of the country because the endeavor is that at jsshr constant colleges now we should have students coming from northern india from northeast from central india from western india so that we have uh, like the total representation of the various uh, uh, people from various backgrounds coming to our jss hr campus now coming over to the national education policy because this is also very important because this program which we are doing today it has to be seen from a broader perspective of our national education policy 2020 because this policy uh, spurs us to scale greater heights and we in this the online education system whether it is through swayam portal or it is our own uh, 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 traditional online program which are there our odl programs they are going to the main thrust area for this and in all this because the national education policy is basically looking at transforming the entire gamut of education the way we look at the education of our country that is going to undergo a paradigm shift maybe over next one decade and in all this activity it is undoubtedly the student is the center focus it is the entire program is national education policy is student centric and it lays lot of emphasis on use of technology and its integration for online learning program and to enable this platform to deliver a high quality and impactful programs to the students that's why it is anytime anywhere and as as per the convenience of the students and this makes it imperative that uh, we as a university uh, it has uh, now the time that we recognize the fact that student is the main stakeholders and make the student and make the system of our jsscr in various constant colleges and departments to respond to their dreams and aspirations and in this uh, we have a new policy now and that is education policy it gives us now as i uh, have heard all the speaker after speaker that is given a lot of uh, acceptability to various modes of learning especially with regard to face to face learning online and distance or virtual mode and uh, in this like the various elements of student centricity as per the national education policy one is this multiple entry and exit points and promotion of the mother tongue and other languages focus on the art and humanities reforming the examination system with open book testing and group exams so these are the various elements of uh, the multiple entry and exit system and the various reforms which are be brought out in the education uh, system the way it is being uh, implemented at the moment second very important point which has come across is academic bank of credit and this also factors in the potential of time space mode speed and language and that in many ways is going to give a new approach to way the education is being done and third element is that there is going to be educational transformation with the use of a technology which is going to be the key element in this whole process and this academic bank of uh, credit this is going to be uh, like currently used to uh, implement this system the new teaching policy will also have be backed by acquiring new knowledge how to basically implement it also and that's why we are now it's a swayam is just one of the interaction we will have more of interaction to see how the various elements of national national education policy 2020 are implemented already we got a advisory committee uh, which is basically guiding us with implementation of nep 2020 and dr prashant has already taken an initiative along with dr ravisha to basically do a pilot uh, sort of a implementation of various elements of national education policy which i have mentioned in uh, almost eight programs uh, of uh, uh, the life sciences i hope i am correct dr prashant i think number has, has it increased the last time i heard was eight programs Uh, yes sir uh, uh, there are five ug programs a uh, total there are about 16 programs being offered so we have set, uh, we are trying to uh, implement across all programs but first priority is the ug program sir so, so this sir, is four as i heard was last time it was four ugs and four uh, pg programs so number has gone yes, up yes sir yes sir so that's i think because see this numbers also like the way we are seized of it we are doing it in a very aggressive and proactive manner the implementation because i just heard from dr prashant this figure about uh, 
uh, two weeks back and now the figure has changed. And I think in this, the life sciences department has taken a lot of initiative and uh, I must appreciate their effort in this regard because this uh, pilot implementation has given us a lot of uh, uh, insight into it that how we should be implementing this national education policy elements in other constant colleges also and the departments and what troubleshooting needs to be done for this. Now, there are other 10 elements of national education policy, which I'll briefly cover, uh, just uh, cover it up. Number one is the pilot studies for online education, which we are already doing. And some of these programs, as per the NEP 2020, they have identified agencies like IGNO, IITs, NITs, which are basically to conduct these uh, pilot studies at a national level and uh, to evaluate the benefits of integrating education with online education, while very important component of it is mitigating the downsides and also to study the related areas such as student device addiction and most preferred, uh, preferred formats of content. The result of these pilot studies will be then publicly communicated and used for continuous improvement. And that's what we are seeing off in the life sciences also. And we'll make use of this information, which is being put up in the public domain also by these agencies. Second very important component of national education policy is digital infrastructure. And this, the emphasis is that there's a need to invest in creation of open, interoperable, evolvable, and public, public digital infrastructure in the education sector that can be used by multiple platforms, point solutions to solve for India's scale, diversity, complexity, and device penetration. So that's a whole idea and trust of us also at JSSHR that we should be not trying to get the students from different parts of the country and this will address the issue of diversity and complexity also. And these uh, uh, online platform, they become the devices for us to penetrate into this market. And third is online teaching platforms and tools. And that's why we are here today not discussing Swam and other platforms will also be taken up. Fourth is content creation, digital repository and dissemination. I think we all have talked a lot about it. Fifth is addressing the digital divide. So once we have these programs going, I think the digital divide issue will also be addressed. But I think the other elements of national education policy, they are at the national level that besides these online platforms, because for other parts of the country, they'll be using television, radio, and community radio. So that may not be that much relevant to us. Sixth element is virtual labs. And this is one area which we have to work upon, how to create these virtual labs. And uh, we have got a WHO program, which is already underway, in which we have trying to work out the virtual audits also. How to do the virtual audits of the pharmaceutical units and virtual labs will be one of the elements of it. Seventh is training and incentives for teacher. Eighth is online assessment and examination. And ninth is blended model, models for learning. That also we have uh, heard. And uh, one very important element, which Dr. Prashant touched upon was laying down the standards. So these are the various elements of national education policy. And uh, I've touched upon why it is very important for us to implement this SWIM portal. And uh, if we can have some of the programs uh, with a good con quality content, if they are already available. So I, it's my personal request to all the principals and uh, HODs who are online, that if we can have them sooner, the better for us in our ranking when we are applying for it. Even if we have done a couple of programs over there, at least we make our presence felt on the SWIM portal and we can uh, put it in our rankings that we are there. So with these, uh, I think uh, I conclude my remarks and I congratulate all the concerned in this regard and uh, all the like uh, Dr. Kushalapa, Dr. Nilani, Dr. Dakshani, Dr. Prashantes, Dr. Prashant B and uh, Dr. Manjunatha and all our faculty who have come online today uh, for uh, joining hands to make this SWAM portal exercise and SWAM adoption a success in this regard. And uh, with the, this, I think we'll be addressing the aspirations of the students and the society at large. So with these words, I thank once again all of you and look forward to concerted effort from each one of you to see to it that we are there on this uh, ranking as far as the SWAM uh, adoption and uh, implementation is concerned. So thank you and thank you all for the patient here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, as indeed shared by you, we are going to join hands, not only for uh, maintaining and driving our university higher the ladder in the ranking as well as the accreditation systems, but also delivering the education to the society as uh, expected from a reputed university like ours. And uh, as an act of gratitude to all the faculty 
who have joined in large numbers and also retained themselves and connected to us, I would request our registrar, sir, Dr. B. Manjanatha, to give a formal vote of thanks and gratitude. Thank you, Prashant. I think uh, seeking the blessings of uh, His Holiness Swamiji, it is my privilege to propose a lot of thanks. Beforehand, there was one question there by Dr. Ranjini. She was asking whether these courses can be targeted to uh, only medical professionals or to general population. I think both can be done. It can be specific to general uh, medical profession or your profession, any of your profession, or it can be a general topic. So there was, I could see Dr. Devaraj Murthy also there. The uh, medical officer, JS Hospital Sutur. So he also can contribute because uh, all the steps have been there and you can always contact Dr. Prashant or anybody of us for uh, any of your help. It, the main intention, because here we cannot sleep over our past glory. So we are uh, achieved something, we should not stop there because we should not be caught napping. So other institutions may go ahead and uh, implement so many things because we cannot depend on what is there at present. So in future, there may be many regulations, restrictions and admissions. Admissions may come down, which we have seen in other, uh, some of our constant colleges. So this is a gold mine which we should all uh, adapt and adopt. Then only we can survive. This is for our survival. This is the first and foremost. So formally, I would like to thank our uh, honorable uh, vice chancellor, and our uh, pro-chancellor for all their support and uh, personal interest involvement in this. I, al I also thank Dr. Kushalappa, Dr. Nilani, Dr. Vakshani, Dr. Prashant V and Dr. Prashant S for their active involvement. I thank all the deans, the heads of the departments, heads of uh, the coordinators of the departments, all the staff for active involving. I think we, are, we will take this because all of each and every faculty should be involved and uh, at least one program they should be creating, small or big, that is different. So I thank one and all for your patient hearing and involvement. And this is one of the first of the series of these programs. There will be more hand-holding from our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And as per our uh, Vice Chancellor sir's instructions, the recorded video is going to be hosted in the official YouTube channel of JSS Academy of Higher Education Research, and it will be made available for all those who would miss, who had missed it, and also who would want to revisit it and learn more from the uh, revisiting the channel. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.